As we stepped towards him, I could see him feel that we weren't going. And he turned around to say it again. And this time it was with greater force and the billy cub raised. But he never got a chance to say it. He looked in our faces and he saw something that really unnerved him. He gulped, he blinked, and the right was on. Stonewall is a major, it's a major event and a major turning point that leads to so much more recognition of the gay population. I'm certain the people who were in the, in the Stonewall bar that night didn't know at all, have any idea that this was a kind of gonna spark a, a worldwide movement for LGBT rights. When the Stonewall Rebellion happened in June 1969, the cities had been burning in 67 and 68. The anti-war movement was in just full force. The civil rights movement was burgeoning. And so when the Stonewall riots happened, it was, it radiated, even to my small hometown in Michigan. Well, the day of June 28th, I had gone with my friend Birdie to see the body of Judy Garland. And then we had decided we were going to go to Stonewall that evening. We were on a stoop not far up from Stonewall Bar when there was a huge commotion. And I heard something about a raid. They were raiding places that catered to the gay population, largely because there were laws in place that prevented them from congregating. Most of the bars were mafia run, they were very seedy, and they would pay off the police. More legitimate establishments did not allow the gay population to come in. They refused to serve patrons that they knew were homosexual. And places like Stonewall allowed them in, allowed them to congregate and serve them without question. If they didn't get the payoff, or if there was like a political campaign, or there was a reason that people wanted to show that they were clamping down on perversity, they would just arrest everyone, throw them in a paddy wagon, take them down, and as I said, sometimes they would print their name in the newspaper, and then those people would lose their job. The raid was a shock because this was a major thoroughfare. This wasn't like a raid with most gay bars, which was on side streets, forgotten, lonely streets. This was the center of things. It was a shock. Also, it was our only turf, it was the only block where we had safety in numbers, where you didn't have to look around. You didn't have to worry they were going to be attacked because you wouldn't be attacked on Christmas Street. It was our street, and now it was raided, really raped. The drag queens were being brought out of the bar, and of course they loved the attention, and after them, the people that had a great deal of shame, uh, either married or uh, had a job, a good job, or, uh, and they couldn't be discovered, they came out miserable and trying to hide their faces. We were all formed in an arc around the bar, and the police controlled the area before the bar. And there was a policeman on top of the step of the back of the paddy wagon. And someone in the paddy wagon, a drag queen, kicked him. I never saw that before. I never saw anyone strike a cop. So I knew she was in a lot of trouble, but of course, within minutes, we knew what trouble she was in when we heard the pounding she was getting and the moaning. It, it was ugly. It was even uglier not to see the damage done to her face. And the cop came out of the paddy wagon, very self-satisfied, did what they usually do. They tell you to, to get lost, and you listened. And he said, all right, you fag sore enough, now get out of here. And with complete confidence, he turned his back to us. But for the first time, something else happened. We started taking step towards him, step after step, slowly towards him. All hell broke loose. And the police really must have been fearful because they ran into the bar and shut the doors. Stonewall, other bars and establishments like it were so important because it was one of the few places where you could go and just be yourself. 99% of gay and lesbian people, they lived closeted lives. They went to work, they had their biological family, and the vast majority were in the closet. And then they had their secret world where they had their love life and their social life and their gathering places like the Stonewall Inn. It was a dump. But it was our dump, it was a place for us, it had a glittering dance floor, a great jukebox, and a variety of different types of gay people. It was like a gay Noah's Ark. To dance then in a place like that was like almost total freedom. It's like once the door closed behind you, it was your environment, your world, and you sort of controlled it. That's what we didn't have, control. 
we always had danger. Everywhere we went, there was danger. Every street we congregated on was danger. But here, the danger seemed locked out. That night, it was uh, end of June, it was hot. It was 1969, and there were riots, you know, kind of in a lot of cities around the country, and there were a lot of political movements going on. But also, there was just this sense of being fed up and, and not wanting to be pushed around anymore. The riot is very strange because you don't stand in one place in a riot, it's a swirl. And there are smells of sweat, burning garbage cans. Well, you could smell the adrenaline almost. We grabbed all the pennies we had to throw them at the bar's door because they were made of copper and it signified the police. People started throwing more than just uh, pennies. They started throwing whatever they had in their pockets that was disposable, whatever they could find on the street, what was ever in the garbage cans. People went out and came back with bags of used orange uh, peels, that there was an orange Julius near us, so we used those for ammunition. Bricks were being thrown, but of course we were not baseball players, we never even trained in baseball, we all played with dolls, so the bricks did not hit the intended targets, but usually other queens. But who didn't mind, as we bandaged them, they understood. And there was one queen, Miss New Orleans, I'll never forget her, full of determination, complete determination, full of fire, full of leadership. That one moment, this queen who said little uh, for most of the time I knew her, became all of a sudden a major leader. She jumped down, single-handedly grabbed a parking meter and almost single-handedly loosened the whole thing up. It started breaking the concrete. Then people helped her. They used that as a battering ram. Some queen, and you could smell it at first, used lighting fluid to light the door on fire. The whole thing was so rough. Here I was fighting. Usually I was running. I had to fight, and you had to fight for your friends. You had to prove yourself. I mean, I don't think I could have gone back to the block if I didn't fight. And then all of a sudden, the loudest thing in a riot happened. Everything went silent. And you hear this heavy stormtrooper footsteps. And the crowd before me opened. There they were, the tactical patrol force, dressed in riot gear, meant for the Newark riots or riots in Chicago or riots anywhere. And they didn't know what to do when they confronted a bunch of sissy queens that were almost like, what are we going to do now? We were looking at each other as if we had time to plan. And then we sang that famous Diddy We Are The Village Girls and did a kick line because it's the only thing we could do. We wanted to taunt them. And we did. And they did charge. I got hit in the back with a nightstick. It didn't hurt then. It hurt the next day when I showered. And we just dispersed. We just fled. But we kept riding because they couldn't catch us. The riot petered out on its own. That was our victory. They didn't stop it. Dawn was coming. Exhaustion was setting in. I sat on a stoop. The queen across from me, bloody. Six feet away from was a cop who was just leaning down, exhausted. And the whole street glittered with broken glass like it was diamonds. And the sun started picking it up. And it was like almost a very beautiful ending to what I thought was a frightening night now I thought about it. I thought this was it. We are going to get it. We don't have Christopher Street anymore. They're going to get on us. We'll never gather here again. They're going to get us wherever we are and bother us and move us. And we've taken a step backwards, I thought. And I thought, how sad. But what else could we have done? It was so natural to do what we did. And I was wrong. It's so good to be wrong sometimes. The whole city knew what happened the next day, the entire city. Because gays were always interesting to people, if anything else, fascinating, let's say. I remember walking down the street, and there was a sanitation worker, a really tough guy, and I saw him glare at me. And I, he was throwing his bags into the back of the truck, and I wish I had walked to the other side of the street, because I didn't like the look he gave me. And I thought he was going to say something, because you could always say what you wanted to a fag. He didn't. He raised his hand in a fist salute. I was shocked. One of the most remarkable things about Stonewall, and one of the reasons why it's such a major turning point for the gay rights movement, is that unlike events before it, marches that came before it, it made gay rights activism more societally prominent and not acceptable, but acknowledged. I think that people had no idea the the effect that Stonewall was going to have when it was happening. I really think they had no idea. I think the fact that the Christopher Street March was a year after Stonewall, and it's been every year since then, really shows what a difference Stonewall made, not in the moment, but within one year, how much had changed, how much had been kind of mobilized by it. The parade solidified everything for me. The parade really made us a group. 
the parade was the first celebration of Stonewall, or let's say the Stonewall spirit. Well, I'm certainly not going to stand up here and pretend to be an expert on what happened at Stonewall. The actions taken by the NYPD were wrong, plain and simple. The actions and the laws were discriminatory and oppressive, and for that, I apologize. I think that the movement has changed so much in the 50 years since Stonewall. History is not this linear thing where it just gets better and better, it ebbs and flows. I think we have had these periods in history where there's been more openness and acceptance and then there are times where things are shutting down. I think that so much of where the movement will go from here and what the movement will have to fight for depends on what the atmosphere in the country is like. This explosion, and especially in the last few years with the acceptance of gay marriage and everything that goes with it, it can't be completely undone. It can't be, you know, put in a box and nailed shut. But I do think we're heading into a darker period where um, some of these legal gains are going to be reversed. Clearly we're not there yet, but what do you see for the future? What is your thoughts on the future? I think things will get better. I'm more of the optimist that everybody is. But we have something to fight for. We have rights to defend, and we will do it, and KP will do that, I'm sure.